All right, hey everybody, my name is Bobby Chu and I'm here for the Pro Co Challenge. And my challenge is cute, but deadly. And what does that mean? Well, that's exactly what I love doing is uh, creatures that are just cute and deadly. I love that combination and I think maybe that's probably why I got chosen to do something for Tim Burton uh, many years ago. That's how I kind of started my career designing creatures that were cute but deadly. And sometimes just deadly, sometimes just cute. But when you put that combination together, it's like sweet and sour. It just goes together so well sometimes when it's the right amount. And that is the big challenge today. I'm gonna be looking for design. I'm gonna be looking for technical ability. And most of all, I'll be looking for the emotion that it gives me. And that generally is from the idea or story. All right, so why don't we hop in and check out some of this art. All right, so this one is Momo draws ants getting eaten by a bird. It's a little chick with a scorpion tail. So the chick part is the cute part. The scorpion tail is de definitely the deadly part. What I would have loved to do is just incorporate that stinger in there more. Like how is it truly being deadly? I think maybe with the ants also following the little chick, it doesn't seem like the ants are that scared, which the thing could still be deadly, but it does take away from that overall feeling that this uh, creature is deadly. While this one is very cool, the idea is very cool. I really love how the shadow tells the story, right? You can see this ominous kind of creature in the shadows. Maybe that's what's truly living inside this cat. I don't know, but I would love to find out. The curiosity is there. Now, the thing about this one is that the character and the cat are both in black and white. And for me, that doesn't really have much to do with the interesting thing about this illustration. However, that is something that you notice a lot, too much, I feel, for me, for if I was to do this. I wouldn't make the characters black and white unless there's a, it was for a certain purpose. Because right now it's just attracting too much attention for that, as opposed to the cat and the shadow that it projects. Chow, I don't want to eat that. It's cute and deadly, that's awesome. Now for me, there does seem to be a lot of kind of like dodge and burn here. A lot of extremely dark tones and a, a lot of extremely saturated light tones. And it just feels a little bit too much to me. I kind of feel like those are kind of like the icing on the cake. You don't want to have too much icing. The other part about this is, you know, the creature part of the mouth kind of thing coming out of the back end of this chicken, it does feel a little odd. It feels very graphic. And the reason that it feels graphic to me is that it's a perfect kind of profile shot of the, the mouth, mouth butt, whatever you want to call it. Now, in this case, nothing else is perfectly up front or to the side. So that makes that mouth, because it's to the side and everything, just kind of a little jarring for me. It just like, I can't help but to focus on it because it's such a graphic looking thing now because of the angle that you chose. However, I really like the idea. It was really fun. Boom. Very cute and very trippy. If this challenge was called cute but trippy you got it right there I, I like the whole entire feeling of trippy and i love how you really played with the eye and made it almost like space like you're looking into outer space through the eyes or something and the little stars in the darker part of the fur or that's what it feels like to me stars uh, really wonderful. However, the only thing about this is I just didn't feel like it was cute but deadly anymore. Okay, the deadly part I didn't really feel as much, but wonderful job. Okay, Mikhail Gustafsson. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know what I love about this is 
it's clear how the story goes. Are you supposed to look at the finger first? No, you're not supposed to look at the severed finger. For me, what happens is I look at this image and I see these giant, dark, beady eyes. And I'm like, whoa, what is that? And then I look at the overall shapes very quickly and they're very cute. They, they click to me as being, oh, this, this is a very adorable thing. And then it goes down to the bottom, severed finger that it's holding. And then that tells the story. And then I'm like, oh man, this is great. This is so funny. So I love the idea, the design, as well as the order in which you have told this story. The one thing about this one, I feel is there's these light tones that are sprinkled throughout this image in the blue fur, especially, that almost makes it feel like you miss painting in some areas, which you didn't. It's just lighter fur. Technically, it doesn't feel truly three-dimensional, truly furry. Uh, that could be a style choice. That could be more like I'm doing an illustration. I'm not thinking about representing the thing as very, very representational of a furry creature. But to me, it does feel a little inconsistent. It, you know, the white fur, the tuft of fur on the chest feels completely different than the tufts of fur on the side of the face. And so because of that, it's inconsistent to me in the technical uh, way that you painted this. Uh, however, it doesn't really matter sometimes. You know, I, I feel like story is king and the feeling that you get from the image is the most important part. And you got it, so way to go. I love this one. Let's take a look at the next one. Now this one was a little disturbing to me, I feel, because right off the bat, because they're both white creatures and one looks like it's about to eat the other, it feels a little bit like cannibalism. And that was definitely creepy. The cute part, it feels kind of maybe cute, but I would love to have seen it be more cute. Turn that cute meter up a bunch. That's what I'd say. So this one here is funny. I think it's more funny than cute, but you did an excellent job. The texture here, really nice. On the back, you could really feel what kind of texture that is. The butterfly looking wings, I feel like they are just kind of there. And what I would love to have seen is how does it transition from the butterfly wings forming into the back muscles and stuff like that? Like, how do they attach? Because currently they feel like they're kind of sunk in. And perhaps same with the flower on top of the head. The last part is, is that a nose as the tiny little butterfly, like on the, on the nose there? Is that the nose or is that a butterfly? So that part was a little perhaps confusing for me. The other part to this, which is just kind of like a general thing, uh, when I'm creating creatures and especially for films, you know, you gotta think about that backstory. You gotta think about how does this thing live? Is it living in this tiny little pond? Because for me, that doesn't really make that much sense currently. It could make sense, perhaps if it's staged in a different way, but Currently, it doesn't really make that much sense. It looks like a pond that's just way too small for this thing to be living in. But overall, you know, love the textures. It was a nice piece to see. Okay, so this one, I've definitely seen this animal before in other photos. I remember seeing like some very viral photos of this animal because it's so cute and everything. So yeah, you picked a good animal. It, it's a very cute one and you did a very nice job rendering. You can see all the hard work putting into the rendering. Uh, the mechanical parts could feel more mechanical. In this case, the fur looks like it's really real. It's supposed to feel really furry, which means everything else to me needs to feel like how it's supposed to feel. And so, the pants feel like cloth, but don't feel like the right kind of cloth, actually. It feels softer. And that is partially because of how the folds were painted. Those folds are not as rigid as perhaps jeans would be. 
I'm getting pretty nitpicky here. I hope that more than anything, I can kind of tell everybody stuff that will help to improve their paintings. Okay, this next one is from Arun, or Arjun. Fun, reminds me of Monsters, Inc. And perhaps that might be something to consider. Right, when you think of the color of Scully, and you think of the design of Mike, you put that round shape of Mike in there with the one eyeball, and then you put the color of Scully, or is it Sully? Sully. And we have this. And it doesn't help that the little kid has a little book that says Monster over top of it. It reminds me of Monsters, Inc. However, it's a fun idea. It's a cute idea. And so the idea, I really love it. It's fun. But I do feel like we have to be a very aware of the other things that are going on that other people have made and make sure that we come off as an individual, as our own creative person. All right, so what do we have next here? We have Claudio. This is fantastic. Love it. You know, I'm not always all about very representational, very realistic. I very much appreciate all facets of art, including a more illustrative style. And this is a wonderful example of that. I love a bunch of things about this, okay? So first is the, the biggest thing that comes to me is the story of this uh, painting here. It automatically is taken as cute, right? I look at it, I'm like, oh, what's this cute thing? Oh, it's so cute. And then I look a little bit further and I go, oh, that's a little, Weird. You can see the brain of this creature and the veins that attach to the eyeballs. And then I see the skeleton of a rodent, it looks like. And then I understand, right? I understand this image as this blob absorbed the rat and devoured it, dissolved it. And that's kind of creepy but it's also kind of cute. Now, the other thing I really love about this is that this person didn't stop there. You didn't stop there, Claudio. You didn't because you put in some fun posters in the back here, uh, mask required, and you got this uh, person with coronavirus pandemic mask. Also, you have these boxes in the back there. You have a little tag of graffiti on the wall. You have some stuff that's laid down on the ground there little bottle cap and something else. I love that, I appreciate that because it rewards the viewer with something else to look at, right? Well, if they decide to pay more attention to your piece, I love doing those things. I love it when somebody is looking at my piece of art and they react and they look further and they go, oh wow, yeah, did you see that? And they start telling their friends, they go, yeah, you see this little Chewbacca little sketch that I did? And they go, oh yeah, that's baby Chewie. But look at the, look at the lunchbox. He's carrying a Star Trek lunchbox. He's a Star Trek fan, you know? And then they just feel this extra bit of joy, like they found something special. I love doing that with pieces and you've done that with this one. It's a way to go. All right, Sarah, awesome. So you got this beautiful little cute uh, mouse that has tamed this nasty looking uh, miniature dinosaur thing named Lucy, right? I love that, by the way, how you put a little name tag on Lucy and how it's named Lucy, because that sounds definitely cute, but you can tell it's very deadly. And the combination is cute, right? With a deadly uh, beast, which is awesome. Nice job. So what do we have here? We have cute and deadly squad. Okay, Michael, awesome job. Three rodents, the rodent warriors, ready to do battle. Now the thing I, really appreciate about design, about film, about characters is when you can really feel the time and energy and research that were put into a piece. You know, when I looked at all the designs in uh, Black Panther, oh my gosh, you could just keep going back and seeing more and more. It's like, oh, what is this tribe? Oh, what is this tribe? What is, 
you know, and, and every tribe within Wakanda had their own identity. Uh, that was amazing. And you could feel the thought that came with all of those different identities and the influences that they took from various real tribes uh, and people and cultures. And that's how I feel about this one. I feel like you did a bunch of research, you found actual armor, things like that, and you designed it in a way to fit rodents. Wonderful. Okay, next one here, Ina. Awesome. Ina didn't just do one painting, this person did three paintings. Wow. And what a wonderful story it tells. And by the way, beautifully done, beautifully designed. The colors, everything, just lovely. The very first one, it's stalking. This creature is stalking something. The second one, we go straight to the end. It's kind of like Pulp Fiction. It's going straight to the end. Smiling at you with apparently blood all over him. And then the final one, you see what it was. It was just jam. It's just strawberry jam. And this creature found some strawberry jam and had a great little snack. Wonderful. I, even though it isn't deadly in this sense, it's deadly for a jar of jam, I guess. Yeah, love it. Love the whole entire feeling of it. Very nicely done. Oh my goodness. Cute and deadly Brutus. This one is fantastic. I love it. This character, the shapes of it and the positioning of the eyes and the mouth, it feels a little baby Groot-like. Uh, if I could just be totally frank, but I can't emphasize enough how much I love the idea, especially the expression on his face. Like it doesn't even, it's so innocent, you know, it's innocent, doesn't know what it's really, how deadly it is. Looks like a little coal kind of kid that's just on fire and is about to cause a lot of havoc. Way to go. This one. Uh, was very nicely done. And I appreciate the technical aspects of many of these things as well, uh, especially the highlight uh, on the can that reflects the flame that's coming out of that can. Nicely done. All right, this one, wonderful. I have seen an image before that I love from Alex Konstad. These headlights are looking at this demon and the demon has these two goats right beside it. I wonder if you are a admirer of Alex Konstad. There's no problem with that because you've, I feel, have taken this and created your own idea, your own thing and made it different. This is definitely cute and deadly. This is gonna be very hard to choose a winner. Not only is it cute and deadly, it's some sort of like Satan worshiper or something. It has that pagan symbol underneath. Very creepy. Very creepy. Dean, deadly mushrooms. Now this one is great as an illustration, I feel, but as perhaps a concept, I feel like it can be a little bit more difficult to absorb quickly. And this is really just an extra thought okay uh, from looking at this this was an illustration challenge so this is a wonderful illustration for my work if i'm working on a film um, this most likely wouldn't work unless you're not supposed to truly understand what that thing is because clarity is crazy important when you're working on games or films you want to let the audience know exactly what it is if they're supposed to know exactly what it is and, and you're supposed to let them know very, very quickly. This one just takes a little while, okay? But overall, nice job. Love it. This tells a whole entire story. And you know what? This actually looks like it could be in an art of book or something like an art of some, some movie where this is an amazing scene where the, everybody thought there's no hope to save us from this giant Godzilla. Out comes this beautiful white unicorn with a blonde tail and blonde mane and defeats Godzilla. Wonderful. Yes, another, it looks somewhat mushroom-like, 
definitely deadly looking with all those teeth there. And then overall, if I just kind of glanced at it, I'd probably think it's pretty cute too. Nice. So this is a wonderful depth of field here. Something I might have done would, would be just to try to separate those two elements a little bit more. Okay, I feel like it, it could have been done with perhaps a little bit more of a blurrier background. The details could be blurred out just a touch more. And the overall value structure in the back could have been a little bit more separated from the value structure in the front. The elements in the back could have just stayed in the very, very light tone area. Because also there's a lot of smoke with fire which can create a lot of atmosphere, which could separate the foreground from the background even more. Oh, look at this cute little plant. It has some eyes and it's alive. It's a cute little baby plant, but wait, it isn't. That is only what looks like maybe, what is that, the tongue of this creature or something? You know, that's the thing that um, I would have loved to see a bit more clear. Is this the tongue of the nasty creature with the teeth on top and it actually connects to this little baby creature so the baby creature is literally its tongue or is it is this little baby creature kind of like the creatures that hop out of these pods when they open up on the side there so just a little bit more clarity i think would have really driven this idea home a little bit better great job though very cute this one is uh, it looks like a 3D uh, version, which is wonderful. Yeah, I love seeing the variety. And I like seeing how it's like all cute in the front, deadly in the back. And obviously it's not looking for a new friend, perhaps. It's looking to make this little pink uh, creature its meal. This one is great. Oh my gosh adorable face very cute and then the story makes me really wonder what i love about this is the connection of the hands right this creature has skeletal hands and then it's collecting hands that it's made into kind of like a little sash and tied it around its uh, around itself very very cool very creepy. I love it. Skizen. It's interesting, you know, it's, it's cute. I'm not sure how deadly it might feel to me right now because the things that are happening feel a little abstract. Like all that stuff coming out of the mouth just has a lot of texture in it without it being too defined, if you know what I mean. Like I don't see any leaves, I don't see any full descriptions of bark. And things like that so that would have been nice to see especially with the fur being so distinctively fur right so you have these elements in here which are very distinct and then elements that are very abstract yeah and the eyes great let's make everything else to that level and you would totally uh make such a difference with this piece alejandro nice you know it's cute they're definitely cute and it's definitely deadly because it's eating somebody's leg. With this one, I feel like all the elements, I would have just loved to see a bit more cohesiveness with the textures. You can see that the, uh, the creatures there, you spent a lot of time making sure all the feathers are going, they feel like they're going around the object, right? You're wrapping around the object. However, the leg, the fur on the creature there, feels kind of just stamped on. It doesn't actually go around the object nearly as much, especially around the hind part of the animal. Azalea. So this one is a bunch of toys, but one is evil. Look out. And that one evil one has caused havoc to the other creatures, or to the other toys, I should say. This one, I just feel like I would have loved to see the evil toy just stand out more. I would have loved to see the evil toy really, really stand out. I would have loved to see all the other toys be violently dismembered just more, but put them more into shadow. So 
First thing we see is this evil looking toy with perhaps just subtle hints of other toys. And you need to focus into the dark to see the havoc that this one toy has created. Or the other scenario is leave the Santa laying there in the spotlight. It's been dismembered. It needs a lot of help. And then you look into the darkness, you see all the other toys kind of shocked and you see in the darkness the bad toy and perhaps the, the bad toy can have just slightly little glowing red eyes or something like that in the darkness. You know, it's all about the pace and the order which you tell the story. Okay, this next one here, it's cute. Little cat sitting on top of ah, a pile of corpses. Oh, definitely cute and deadly. This one's interesting because I'm just not sure which one's the deadly one. The bigger one looks like it should be the deadly one, but it also looks like it's just tangled in a pile of webs, but it's not scared. So it doesn't feel like the smaller one is the deadly one either, but the smaller one looks like it's more free. So I just would have loved to see that uh, those messages defined a bit better. But I really appreciated how the eyes are not just typical eyes. You know, you have magenta in there. Instead of whites for the eyes, it's magenta, which is fun and interesting and different. This one here, Ingrid, love the pose, love the angle. And it's adorable, adorable expression. Definitely cute, but deadly. The side part of that armor, I feel like should be with darker tones. I would take away some of those highlights there as well because you have this really nice highlight on the front part of that, that mask thing that comes down. Putting highlights on the other side kind of takes away from it a bit. Lovely job. Who wants sushi? Not me. After looking at this one, you know, because you got this big puffer fish and it's about to devour its own kind and this frog is like, I'm out of here. Cute puffer fish, deadly to other aquatic things. This one, bird, it's cute, but it's a fire bird and it's burnt down a village. Nice job. Okay, Jody, done a little gerbil. I used to have a little gerbil. Gerbils are cute, but they can definitely be deadly. They got really sharp teeth and I remember getting bit by one breaking right through the skin and uh, I was definitely a lot more careful after that. This one especially is deadly because it, it's got all that extra stuff on the back. Still looks very cute though. Very nicely rendered here. It's a beautiful piece, lovely design, very cute creature. Not sure how deadly it is. That's the thing I would have loved to see you push a bit more. Great job. This one, whew, really beautifully rendered. Really beautifully rendered. And it looks cute. I can understand that it's deadly because it's chasing this fish. It's about to eat that fish, so it's deadly to the fish. However, I would have loved to see the deadly aspect of this um, ramped up even more. That would have been awesome. Okay, here we go. Snake doing self-portrait. That's cute and it's deadly, so good job. <laughs> All right, and we have this one over here. I would have loved to see the deadly part just turned up a bit more, maybe more ferocious looking eyes. I think there's just so much cuteness in this that you could afford to make this creature a bit more deadly. Okay, Chris, this is good too. How deadly is it? Not too sure. That's the only thing for me. This one's funny. It's cute. It's very weird. Uh, and it's a deadly butterfly killer for sure. Nicely done technically as well. Uh, overall, a really fun piece. Okay, and this one here takes a little while to get the full story, which is totally okay because that's the pace of this illustration here. It's an angler fish with a really cute bulb on the end. Um, and that's how it's kind of cute, but deadly. Great job. Another one with a uh, fish here. The fish in the mouth, deadly creature. Wonderful illustration. Very nice colors and treatment. Nicely done. This one is kind of cool. Well, it's kind of like one of those little tarsiers. I remember seeing them in the Philippines when uh, I got to visit with my family and everything. And they're so cute. Good job. 
Okay, this one here, kind of like the angler fish idea, except the angler is the tongue part and it looks like feathers and it's about to eat some butterflies. Cute, weird, deadly, fun. Good job here, samurai little chickadee bird with a little cigarette spliff. I don't know, he's <laughs> smoking something. Um, looks like it wants to kill something. This one is neat. It took me actually a little bit of time to truly understand this. It's a tooth fairy, but it's a deadly tooth fairy. It's got a bag of bloody teeth. Like she actually stole those teeth out of the person's mouth. So nice job. This one's fun too. You can see on the surface, it looks like a pleasant bird. Underneath, definitely deadly. Good job. I like this one. I like the idea behind this one. It's funny. It's this creature and it's cute, but the way that it's deadly is that it just stinks. And I love how you've put the light behind this one flower, this one plant that you want us to see. And this one plant really helps us to understand what's going on in the story. Great job. Now this one up in the tree here we're seeing this amazing creature come out looks deadly he's got the claws got a tiny little mouth definitely very very cute wow that's interesting it's very trippy it's almost like van gogh's starry night in the background and a very whimsical fantastical creature in the foreground not exactly sure how deadly it is though it looks very interesting this one here creature with a bird in its mouth, cute, deadly, pretty literal, that's good. And assassin puppy dog. Yeah, definitely cute and deadly. Looks pretty fun too, nice rendering. All right, so what's the next one here? Oh, it's a lovely pair of lovebirds. And then you go to the next, ah, it's crazy. Uh, this, the other, the pink bird is definitely not a lovebird. It is some sort of plant or something like that. And now it all makes sense. I saw the rope kind of stuff. It's a vine, it's a red vine. This must be a plant that is disguised as a bird, attracting other innocent birds to it. And when they come, it reveals and captures them. Cute and deadly to the max. I feel so bad for this other bird. Uh, just trying to find some companionship and that's what it gets. But hey, sometimes that's life, especially in nature. Okay, everybody. So I've gone through a bunch of the ones that stood out to me uh, in the entries, however, Great job for everybody that handed something in. It was really like an endless amount of incredible art and inspiration and everything. So why don't we go to the winners now? Okay, drum roll please. Third place is... Da -da -da -da, Ina. Cute, deadly. This is the one with the three panels here. You've got a whole entire story. You don't just have one painting, you have three paintings. Wonderful storytelling, wonderful design. This was done wonderfully. And this was a very tough thing to judge, but love that one. The next one I want to give a prize to is Claudio. Yay! Claudio, number two, runner up. Fantastic. Like I said, when I first saw this, I was like, this is great, it's cute. And then you delve into it and it's like, oh, the skeleton, yes, I get it, cute but deadly. And then you look around and you're rewarded with more stuff to look at. And I really appreciated that. A wonderful example of an illustrative style of cute but deadly. And the winner goes to Eva. This is something I want to learn more about. So it wasn't just the idea, it wasn't just the style, the technical aspects to this had a really wonderful illustrative style, but the story was the thing that really got to me. So congratulations. It's like, why does this thing have skeletal hands? 
Why does it have a string of hands around itself, like collecting hands? What's the story there? It just brings me right in and the face is adorable. So congratulations, did an amazing job. Now, many of the things that I talk about in this video, I notice has been about technical aspects or storytelling. How are you actually telling the story of your illustration? And that's something that I love going into and I love talking about technical aspects and storytelling in my YouTube channel. If you look up youtube.com slash Bobby Chu, my name, you'll find my channel there. And I stream live every Mondays and Thursdays, 6.30 a.m. Pacific time if you're early risers, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, New York time. And we sketch and paint and draw for approximately 90 minutes. The whole entire point is you try to get as much done in 90 minutes as possible. It's all free, it's all fun. It's mainly just to really keep us all going, keep us all motivated, keep us all progressing towards our goals, our artistic goals. And we have a Lightbox Expo Discord channel that I would love to invite everybody to join because it's a really wonderful community where it's not toxic. It's full of genuinely interested people, interested in not just learning more art, but helping each other. And that's what I love to see, artists that are helping each other. So I hope I see you on there because I'm on there all the time and I hope you'll check out my YouTube channel as well. As for me, uh, this has been an absolute joy. And I just want to thank Proco. I want to thank the team for inviting me. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much. My name is Bobby Chu and I'll talk to you all next time.